everybody. How are you? Welcome to Guitar Hunter Live, episode 4000 and something. Um, how are you? Hi. Hello. Good to see you. Uh, this is my favorite, favorite guitar, like electric guitar I've had in so long. It's so goofy. It's so weird. Um, this is the Guild S200. I've owned this guitar three times. And um, the first time I paid four seventy five, second time I paid three hundred, third time I paid like two hundred and twenty, and um, it just keeps getting traded to people that think less and less of it. And now I got it um, super happy. So let's see, bunch of friends are here. Pine Top, this was like Monday. Pine Top, or maybe today, nine thirty one p.m. A couple days ago. But Darcel is here. Shewer is here. Um, happy Friday, everybody. Let's see, everything. I see things. No one is telling me that things sound bad, so that's exciting. Always on the way up. Darcel, uh, <clears throat> TGIF from Jason Rose. Hey, buddy. Stan is here. Hello. Hi, Jeremy. Uh, hi, Stan. <sighs> Greetings from Winston Salem, and happy Friday. Absolutely. That's not right. Where would that be? That's an egg. It's not that helpful. That song has, that rhythm has been stuck in my head. Um, let's see. Have everybody from Bonnie, Scotland. Hello. Uh, Woltai coming in from Weather's Nice. Uh, hope everybody's weather is nice as it is here in Tuscaloosa today. How about it, Jeremy? Um, it is, uh, it's okay. It's kind of cooler here. It was like in the low 70s, high 60s most of the week. Yeah, I think it's like 50. No, it's, it's in the 60s. But it's uh, definitely chillier and raining. It just started raining right before I came in here. So... Anyway, um, Muckhart, uh, from Muckhart, Bonnie, Scotland. Daniel Nadim is here. Daniel. David's here saying hi to Daniel. Daniel's here saying hi. Things are sounding fine. Good. David says hi, or Daniel says hi, David. Um, let's see. He's up, brother, from Anniston, Alabama. I've been there. I've been to Anniston. Um, I think we're going to head, I'll be in, uh, Louisiana. Um, I don't think we're driving. Please, Lord, let us not drive. It's so... I can't do it anymore. Um, Julie is here. Hi, from California. Hello. Um, hello. Hope you're all well. Uh, from Alan. Alan, thank you. Uh, a little two-pound spot there. Thank you. Um, uh, wait, hang on. Is that a euro? Is that a pound? Yeah. That's a pound. I'm an idiot. Um, Ethan White coming from Chickamauga, Georgia. Acoustics are the best. I, I really, really, uh, like the live show, everyone. Yes, thank you, please. I don't see the actual metrics. I can see who, how many people are watching. Oh, if I break things, if I open another tab and go to YouTube Studio, would I see these analytics live? Let me see. Um, okay, I can see that this is live. Hmm. Okay, I can't really see analytics live. Oh, hey. I'll put this into that playlist. Guitar Hunter Live. There we go. Um, yes. So anyway, yeah, hope hope everyone is doing well. Um Oh Kelly, of course. I was like it's like there can't be that many people in Aniston. Um, yeah. Pound. Yeah, you know, um I'm an idiot. That should be a surprise to no one. Uh, this is this is the MXR Micro Chorus, and it might be my favorite sounding pedal. Uh, actually, it's this chord. 
just makes my heart and soul so happy. Anyway, uh, let's talk about some uh, let's talk about some guitars. So the premise on this, uh, the the premise for this live show, um, should be fun and exciting. It's uh, kind of some double standards because I was thinking through there are things that I think I don't know. I just got this mic stand, um, but uh, there are some premises here that I want to talk about. It just things that are different between acoustic guitars and electric guitars, and this is a thing I continue to tease apart. If I'm like at the gym and I forgot my headphones, and I'm not like reading a book or you know watching a youtube video when my brain wanders this is the stuff i wander about wander that's stuff i wander about um that i wonder about uh when my brain wanders this is what i wonder there we go we got there um shovel howdy amigos um let's see just bought my first real mexican strat i can't Put it down, thanks to your wisdom. Bada bing, bada boom, baby. All right, got a good one. That's exciting. I really love, um, the, like, all of the Mexican stuff, the Mexican standards, the players. Um, there's such fun amounts of guitar. And we'll talk about this later. I think that there's so much, um, like, electric guitars kind of top out pretty quick. Um, and then you just get better parts and pieces. Um, but, yeah, I think, you know... 700 bucks 500 bucks i mean you could do a strat right for 500 bucks um and that's pretty hard for me to make a case for them being much more above that um good soggy afternoon jeremy hey it's pretty soggy here you're not too far from me over in west virginia <clears throat> let's see any thoughts on the gibson j45 50s original i do have thoughts i think it's a great guitar i think they're really fun the 50s the necks are big uh, the sixties are, I would do the fifties have the adjustable bridge. I hope to all that is good and holy that they wouldn't. Um, that's a weird, uh, as silly as the Martin authentics, not having an adjustable truss rod, which that's not even that bad compared to the Gibson sixties, J 45s having the, um, adjustable bridges. What were they thinking? It's crazy, 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 crazy. Um, so what about Mexican Martins? We just got a whole bunch of them at, uh, at hometown music. And so I've spent a lot of time with the X and road series and I have a pretty good opinion of them overall. I think they're really good sounding guitars. I think the X series with the HPL is kind of, it's good. Like overall, it sounds good. It's pretty durable. It's the same thing as a countertop. I think that it's kind of cool that some of the new ones have the like Brazilian Rosewood or Macassar Ebony or uh, Ziracote or Ziracote. How do you pronounce that? Um, it, it's yeah, but uh, on the whole, hate that phrase. Um, I think more often than not, they're a little cheesy for me. Um, the Koa looks cool. I think the Brazilian Rosewood. Someone got really turned around. They're like, but how is it Brazilian Rosewood? But it's only $700. Anyway, good guitars. Um, they have fixed my main problem with them was how they used to have pretty straight, like just rounded over, not a real chamfer, but just a rounded over edge. And it made it to where if the sides hit, if a solid top, x series guitar with an hpl side and no binding if it hit something hard like a counter or something like that it would just split open not like easily but not not happening and so that was always my biggest concern uh with that so i think that uh, the x series is good if you have the money save it for the road series they're pretty good um the d10 is surprisingly fun um, it's got some, it's got some interesting stuff. Um, wood quality matters, uh, more on acoustic than electric. It ain't that the truth. Okay. Well, so we'll, we'll talk about those here in a second. I'll just answer some questions and accusations quickly. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, Eastman T484, 339 copy thoughts. Uh, Sweetwater now has Eastman. I owned a 486, uh, like a 330 thing. So P90s, Bigsby. It's a cool guitar. It's really, they are 
incredibly good. They are way better than Epiphones. They're still not quite Gibson or Heritage territory, but they're a great, like, I think they are priced 100% where they should be. Like, yeah, fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars for the really fancy, pretty ones. Um, it is uh, a bummer that Eastman is now at Sweetwater, uh, because Eastman has always said that they were going to stay with small uh, shops and small dealers. Uh, even our rep that signed Hometown up uh, made promises of, you know, we will never be big. We will never be at Sweetwater. We wouldn't sell out like that. And then less than a year later, um, they're at East, they're at Sweetwater. And, um, yeah, I mean, like, I still really like Sweetwater, but I think they're pretty, if you have a good hometown music shop, like a shop in your town, um, try and spend money with them. Cause I mean, it is doing it three and a half, four days a week. Um, you see just how intense, uh, it is to do that. So, um, I'll answer two other quick questions. Um, so, yeah, so we talked about it in the live show last week. So do they uh, do they make you carry certain models or just a dollar amount? Um, no, they make you carry kind of both. Uh, so they say you have to spend this much money in your opening order and then this much by the end of the year on they split it into two series into the navajo stuff all the mexican made stuff and then all the standard stuff so we just had our first d28 show up yesterday but as of last week that was the first order and i tried to be really explicit into explaining that that the first order was just the mexico stuff and uh yeah so um yeah so let's see um Ross says, what do you think about the Martin Modern Deluxe Series? I think they're amazing. I think it is, it is such a good decision for Martin to do that. I think that it gives a pumped-up, modern, competitive, boutique-level acoustic guitar that would help convince people or get people to come back from the callings of the world, the bourgeois of the world, um, to come yeah, like Martin kind of lost the ability to make the best versions of their own guitars and Collings really ate their lunch for a long time doing that. So I think I like the Modern Deluxe series a lot. Daniel had one that I thought was excellent. And uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of those. I don't know. I would pro I would own one. I mean, they're, I mean, it's a boutique level. It's an expensive guitar. Neil. Hey, I'm, the so I'm sorry. I'm the worst. You sent me an email. I didn't read it yet. I've seen it and it's a long email. And that's why I was anyway. I keep thinking when I have time, which I haven't had time in seven years, feels like. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, the next guitar with Bigsby. Install a B bender. What? A blender, not a bender. B blender. Oh. Oh. Okay. Weird. Um. Hey, starting to collect Martins because of your wisdom. My wife said thanks. Good. Good. <laughs> that's not the result sometimes yeah i think doing them in a way like i said that c cause concentric good that make you a better version of yourself and a better player make you more creative make you a better husband or a better spouse um they're good for your kids they're good for your neighbors they're good you know make sure they cause concentric good um should uh local shops match a sweet water deal um if they can but i think you need to be okay uh, man, how do I say this? Uh, Sweetwater breaks certain terms. Uh, like, Sweetwater is so big. Guitar Center is so big. Musician's Friend is so big. Zounds is so big that they are able to violate the terms of service because they know that the big guitar companies aren't going to call them on. But if a small shop promotes a guitar, one of the things we have to do every week, if a small guitar shop would put on their website a number that is wrong, that is off or below, uh, or if we say, call us and we'll give you a deal on you know, this Martin guitar, we will get an issue pretty quick. We'll get an email pretty quickly saying that we are out of compliance with our uh, dealership agreement. And you only get a couple of those warnings. So, um, you know, if Sweetwater is advertising an instrument below map price, they are technically breaking uh, their dealer agreement. All right, let's see. Um, okay. Oh, interesting. I have no 
I have no opinions on this. I have no experience with these. I mean, other than I've only played a couple like Strat copies, which eventually got rebranded it under the name Austin. So anyway, um, let's see. Okay, okay, okay. Um, which would you choose for a lifetime family heirloom guitar if money were no object? A Martin Triple O eighteen reimagined, modern modern deluxe, or an authentic? Interesting. Um, <laughs> I can make a case for any of the three. I'd probably just go the reimagined if that was me. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, you did it. You got, whoa, you got the pro 12 string. That's amazing. That's awesome. Um, that's crazy. Uh, does hometown music have white or cream colored pick guards for an OM style guitar? We do not. We don't do a whole lot of pick guards right now. Um, we just have like the standard WD, nothing too fancy. Um, there's a whole bunch of options. I always love Holter pick guards. So check out, uh, Holter. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't know if he does. I mean, he'll do anything. He'll make one. I'm not going to make something up. Okay. Let's, oh boy. Oh, hold on. Don't you freak out. I didn't add my titles yet. So hang on. Don't panic. Don't panic. They're never in order. I don't understand when I import things. They literally will never be in order. I'm hoping that I have enough to fill our time. I won't just like blather. Let's, who am I kidding? I, there's some blathering will ensue. Um, oh, these are all backwards. Good, good. Okay, sorry. Talks amongst yourselves. Someone quick, tell an embarrassing story. Um, so this one, I had lofty aspirations. That's usually the live show. But let's talk about some double standards uh, in talking about guitars. Because uh, acoustic guitars and electric guitars, they're pretty similar. Uh, but they're also really, really different. And um, as someone who kind of walks in between these two worlds, like I love electric guitars and I love acoustic guitars and um, I have lots of these guitars around, some things I've started noticing that are just a little different, that uh, some rules don't work on both of the guitars. I have Tulsi tea today, which is a surprise favorite. Um, it's like this delicious Indian tea. It's so good. Uh, Ayurvedic stuff. So um, let's talk about amplifiers. That's the first thing that I think is kind of an interesting double standard in the guitar world. Um, I think that, I mean, this is pretty obvious. Everyone that buys an electric guitar will need to buy an electric guitar amplifier, right? We can agree with that. Almost no acoustic guitar players who buy an acoustic guitar are going to need to buy an acoustic amplifier. And therefore... Dot, dot, dot. What do you think? What do you make of that? Therefore, acoustic amps need to be really special. Acoustic amps need to be really affordable. Acoustic amps need to be diverse so you can use other instruments uh, into them. Or, you know, they need to basically be a PA with some effects for guitar. <sighs> Hey, you uh, use your use your electric amps for your acoustics. Kind of. Um, need to not exist. Interesting. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, you definitely can. They don't sound particularly good um, into an acoustic amp, uh, but acoustic pickups, none of them, even the best of them, don't sound a whole lot like the guitar without some, some zhuzh, you know? So I have thought about this over the last couple of years because, because um, I have had many guitar amplifier manufacturers send me acoustic amps and they've really wanted me to hype up acoustic guitar amplifiers and to get people to buy them. And um, so uh, I think back to I had the Fender SFX2, uh, the big one, the 100. And, um, oh, I got a new tube of Pickers Grip, and uh, 
so check out Pickers Grip if you guys if you if you like on a kind of cooler dry days. Uh, my pick gets so slippery and it's just really hard. My hands, you can hear it. My hands are just so dry. So Pickers Grip, this is a free and shameless plug. Uh, Billy's a good friend and he makes his stuff maybe 30 miles over on the other side of the mountain. Um, but it's one of my favorite little guitar things. Um, so, uh, and there it is. Uh, but uh, the Fender Acoustic FX 100, a great amplifier. Um, it's so big. It's beautiful. It sounds great with the new Class D amplifiers. They're not that heavy. Um, so, yeah, I think... Yeah, I think that that's a great option for a lot of people. Um, but it's big. The one that is like probably the locked in, there are two that I think are absolutely great. If you're going to buy an acoustic amp, buy one of the two of these. I think one, I have both of them in this room. One is the Bose S1 Pro. It's a tiny little thing. Battery powered, lasts for hours. Actually, I don't have the other one in this room. The other one is the Fender Acoustic Junior Go which is a battery-powered two-channel amp with Bluetooth, with effects. Um, that one has a looper. The S1 doesn't have a looper. But, yeah. Picker's Grip is a better name than Gorilla Snot. Ain't that the truth? Uh, tried and true Loudbox Mini. Yeah, um, yeah, Alex, you're not wrong, man. Um, I had the Loudbox... I have the Loudbox Mini. It's good. It's a percussive thing. It doesn't have as much resonance. Um, so that's what, for these for these kind of smaller amps, um, yeah. Uh, James says, k k Pure Mini. Thoughts, Jeremy? Um, I have thoughts about the k k Pure Mini. I really, really like it. That's the pickup that I have in my uh, Country Western. I have it in my Paget Model 1. Um, I had it in my Waterloo. And I'm sure I will have that pickup and other guitars in the future. Um, I just got, uh, well, what I like about it, um, I really, really like the incredible, like, bass, like the ground shaking bass response you get out of them. They do feel really accurate to the guitar, but they always need some TLC, um, some zhuzh. So, yeah. Um, so Alex says it, or Alexander is using it as a monitor, but it works well. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a great thing because it has such a powerful. Um, DI because it has like several direct outs on the Fishman stuff where it's like you can send one channel to the like one channel directly out here one channel over there or you can sum them or you can um, yeah pan them left and right so it, there's some cool stuff uh, let's see as a couch guitarist uh, I'm watching this live while taking so much notes good that's exciting um, yeah all of us are couch guitar players uh, at our core um, so I think that's the big one on acoustic amplifiers. You definitely can use electric guitar amplifiers. Um, if you click over to a distortion channel you, and you're playing at any volume, buckle in, hold on to your biscuits, boys and girls, because it's, uh, they get pretty spicy pretty quick. The main limitation between, between an acoustic guitar amplifier and an electric guitar amplifier is the frequency response. <clears throat> And so uh, one of the big things, and you, if you're in electric guitar world, you know this is a problem if you've used an FRFR cab. So uh, electric guitar and acoustic guitar have a different dynamic range uh, in frequencies. Acoustic guitars have higher trebles and lower bass. And so in an acoustic guitar amplifier, that's why you would have a woofer and a tweeter. So you can cover that, you know, 200, 250, maybe 300 hertz all the way up to 18 or 20,000 for the really shimmery high resonant things. Um, but electric guitars are not that. Electric guitars kind of start around, uh, oh, I used to know this. Probably should know this. Um they don't have as low of bass. I think it's like four or 500 hertz, and then they max out around 11K. Uh, but if you ever do like an electric guitar amp and you don't have a cab sim on and it sounds weird and sizzly, that's what's going on is you have way too much high frequency. So that's like a huge problem with uh, the HX Stomp and the Line 6 Helix stuff um, is that it just shows you like full frequency response. So... If you're going to use an acoustic guitar into an electric guitar amplifier, you're just not going to get all that your acoustic pickup is trying to send to your amplifier. So, um, yeah, never face the amplifier. That's true. Um, just 
Uh, wonder how I need to turn the volume. So, uh, have you seen the previews on the new LR Bags duet? I do. I have. Uh, I have one coming. It will be coming to me probably in June. <coughs> so, coming up soon. Um, I'm going to put it in my uh, in my Martin Authentic. Let me put that up. There's a gap here. Wait. Wait. Hold on. Oh, I'm an idiot. It's right next to it. Um, put my pageant here in the middle. That bothered me. That there was not a guitar in the middle there. Um, let's see. Do I have a, an opinion on the Acus Acom? I don't. I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what that is. Um, I'm excited about the duet. Um, so uh, I use my acoustic amp, but I've used my D41 into an Alessandra rewired 65 Deluxe Reverb into an AB763 circuit. Uh, and it does sound great. Yeah, sure. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I, I don't doubt you. <laughs> I absolutely love my Fender Smolder pedal for decent sounding overdrive on acoustic. Overdrive on acoustic. See, lunatic. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I For me, I want all the headroom I can get. I want the cleanest of clean, high fidelity signal for my acoustic guitar stuff. Uh. <laughs> you do. You do. Good. Okay. Uh... Do I still have that Fiesta Red Tele? No, not a chance. That thing sold in like two days. Um, I do have a Fiesta Red Strat that I'll sell you. It's an American Vintage 2. It will be more expensive, but it will be more better. <sighs> I find that a good acoustic guitar preamp DI is more important than the amp. I use a Boss AD10. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely one. It's definitely a way to go. Um, it also depends on when you, what era of music you grew up in. Uh, and what music you want to play. Uh, because there are certain tones that sound like DI acoustic transducer under saddle acoustic tone. But if you grew up in like the more rootsy microphone driven acoustic guitar world, you're going to want something that is like richer, fatter, more authentic. It doesn't sound like the quacky stuff, but yeah. So <clears throat> Uh, would you, we can talk about pickup. We'll talk about pickups more here in a minute. That's one of the other double standards I want to talk about. So what do you prefer? Uh, Trinity K and K Trinity or LR bags Anthem. I've never personally owned a Trinity. The best sounding acoustic guitar tone that I know of is my friend, Chris Talley, uh, in Covington, Louisiana. He has a D 28 marquee with a shade top. Um, and he has the K and K Trinity and it sounds like, his guitar sounds like a beautiful recording studio. Um, it's remarkably good. Um, <clears throat> for me personally, I really like the L the Anthem SL. I don't need all of the control and power. I like having less weight on the top of the guitar. And, uh, yeah. So. People stare at me when I kick it in uh, for some rock bar chords. It's glorious. That's awesome. I believe you. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why that's my, you know. When you do YouTube, your brain starts using filler words because you're sometimes you don't think as fast as you need to talk, and that's a problem. Sometimes you talk without thinking. Also problem. Uh, but, all right, let's keep going. So, uh, tone woods. Tone woods and acoustic guitars are pretty much the most essential part of the guitar. I mean, that is going to be, like, if I'm making subtitles in a YouTube video about an acoustic guitar, that's the, kind of the first thing I'm going to say. I'm going to say it's a European spruce top, and it's uh, mahogany, you know, it's under and mahogany back and sides. And then somebody's going to say, you know, Kaya isn't actually, <laughs> African mahogany isn't actually mahogany. Sorry, just gotten that email. I've received gotten. I've received that email too many times. Um, yeah. So, um, tone woods on acoustic guitars matter a whole lot. Tone woods on electric guitars barely matter. <laughs> uh, they definitely have some bearing, resonance, how long it it works. But by and large, I am of the opinion that electric guitars are not acoustic instruments. They are, by nature, electromagnetic instruments. And so to say that the 
density of the organic material within that holds the strings for an electromagnetic uh, thing, for an electromagnetic guitar. It's hard to say that those two are really that connected. Now, with that said, I made a Telecaster maybe, oh, I'm, gosh, I'm getting old. Um, I made 16 years ago. Uh, I made uh, a, a Telecaster in my friend's shop, and he had black walnut, and I used black walnut, and I put that together, and then I put, uh, what did I put? Um, Tex-Mex? No, Seymour Duncan, some kind of middle of the road Seymour Duncan tele pickups. This is before antiquities existed. I put that guitar together and it was like aggressively so painfully shrill. No bass, no low end, only just full ear picky, ice picky, terrible, terrible, terrible. So um, I changed the pickups. I changed the controls, I changed the pots, I changed the saddles, I changed the strings. Uh, I did all of these things to try and make this thing sound better. And the only thing, the only variable it could have been after changing all those things and spending so much money was walnut is a very shrill tone wood. And so I do think that tone wood on, acoustic, on electric guitars does have an impact. But I think by and large, it is probably third or fourth or fifth in the priorities of what makes a guitar, an electric guitar sound good or bad. Conversely, acoustic guitars. If you have an acoustic guitar, there are certain materials that just you're fighting an uphill battle to make them sound good. Yeah. So, like, um, think about walnut on the back and sides of, a, of a acoustic guitars it's a pretty shrill tone wood sometimes it's also really rich and resonant in other applications it was andy powers years ago that talked about when they reworked uh the maple uh for the six series that they started saying hey we realized that maple is different it's just a different density it's a different tone wood it's technically a hard i mean it is a hard wood instead of a soft wood which I guess others are hardwoods on the back. Um, but they just said, you have to brace it differently. It's different than mahogany. It's different than rosewood. Uh, and it will change the voice of the instrument. So they started really kind of doing this. Um, yeah. So Zunif says, uh, mahogany is dry and woody, which those are hard, like... What do those words mean to a non-guitar player? <laughs> Dry and woody. Rosewood, deep and clear. That makes more sense. I always say mahogany is uh, all the notes are the same volume. And then with a rosewood guitar, you have a lot of bass and a lot of treble. My Maple Top Taylor 8027 sounds a lot better through an amp. I want to say something snarky. No, I won't. But parametric EQ and tone shaping abilities on the Ronick woods. Um, oh, make tone woods. Make tone woods less important. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the thing. And then there's also different kinds of pickups that philosophically amplify the guitar differently. And uh, so, yeah, some are not philosophically aimed at reproduction of your accurate guitar tone and they are more inter interested in what is a great sounding acoustic guitar let's make this sound like one of those great sounding acoustic guitars uh yeah clearly mahogany keeps the rain away <laughs> um yeah all that can be ignored if you cut holes in the braces <laughs> i think i know what you're talking about um, I just want them to say that Jonathan Lee and Walden Guitars did that, at least before them. Not Maybe not first. I'm sure someone else did it first, but... Yeah. My tea bag got in the way. Made it. Don't you dare. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um... But does density increase sustain? No, sometimes density takes away. Uh, 
It's really interesting. We got one of the guitars we got last week. Um, one of the guitars that we got last week was the Johnny Cash DX. Um, and it's all HPL. And it rings out for five to seven seconds. It is unbelievable. It's crazy. Um, oh, did they really? That's awesome. Oh, Ryan Guitars. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ryan has been doing it a long time as well. Let's see. I don't. Someone asked me this the other day, the Mojo Tone Acoustic Pickups. I'll reach out to them and see uh, what I can do. <clears throat> uh, the D28 Amber Tone, um, I don't know. I'll let you know. I will, I'll be able to give you a couple days heads up when it comes in. We just had the a D28 get in today. I think I would... They said this stuff is just going to trickle in. It's not going to be a big drop all of a sudden. Um, let's see. Um, no. Hello from hello from Richmond, Jeremy. I, ju I just bought back a 44 LG2 banner I sold five years ago. Love that mahogany. What a magical, special guitar. That's really exciting. Um, it's a, an 18 in amber tone. And then the D, we got a D28 today, just a normal one. There's an Instagram reel that I just did this morning on it on Hometown. Uh, uh, Taylor needs to bring back the forward-shifted X bracing with their new bracing makes their guitar sound compressed. Ain't that the truth? I think the V-Class bracing, um, novel concept. Uh, they were not the first ones to do it. Lots of jazz guitars in the 20s and 30s had V-bracing. Um, but, yeah, uh, I've got one coming, so I'll let you know on the D18 Amber Tone. Um, it's an, it's, it's going to be a great guitar. So I'll let you know, both of you, I'll let you fight it out, cage match style. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Let's see. Daniel, uh, would it work the same way getting Martins if you were a new shop trying to feature them? Um, n would it work the same way getting Martins? Uh, yes. Well, yes. So we did things a little, we were a little late. So we did, we had to really get our ducks in a row because it was such a big lift, um, that we pushed our initial order until March. So they came pretty quick from when we ordered them. But if we would have ordered them in January, this is also just the establishing order, um, is always a bit, um, the establishing order is always a heavier lift and it, they kind of give you preferential treatment to get all your guitars right away, but not always. So, yes, yeah, so as as opposed to a shop that's a, a new, that's newly a Martin dealer. Yeah, I think it's just kind of the first big lift. Patty Paystub says, I know this will make people cringe, but I love my HG28 with dead Martin retro strings. I love the low end, and this does the trick. Absolutely. You listen to, like, old Tyler Childers, like when he was playing all those like radio shows and he had an HG 28. I don't even think it was a V. I think it was just an HG 28. Um, and he had the deadest of dead strings and, uh, it's really beautiful. Uh, the Martin retros are fun. I've always used the nickel bronze. That's what I really like for that kind of string. Um, yeah. All right. Um, I think for tone woods, I, okay. I'll say for electric guitars, I'll close out some thoughts. I think, um, for if you're looking at an electric guitar, like there are certain combinations that really work. Mahogany and maple for a Les Paul style guitar, awesome. Like it, it really works. There's something about like the warmth of a mahogany guitar with really bitey, clear treble uh, that comes uh, from that maple cap. Um, the ones that I think are pretty nominal, I think that they use alder because it's a cheap. Uh, guitar wood. I think they use poplar. I think they use ash. They're all pretty affordable woods. I don't think they're necessarily musical. Um, yeah. So come at me. Uh, basswood. I think basswood is affordable. I think that's probably its main function. Um, it can be made into Legos, you know. Uh, it's not as fancy or expensive. I mean, there is a reason that certain like fendery things have always been a certain set of tone woods and Gibson things are different because I think they do. There's some element to them, but anyway, all right, <clears throat> my next one, let me hide these comments. Um, <clears throat> 
Uh, have I played a Super D? I have. One came in Hometown Music the other day. A Koa one. I think the guy paid 4800 for it. Now they're around four. I think they did not sell very well. Um, and also they're kind of indistinguishably. Like if you just see it by itself, because people are different sizes, like you wouldn't notice it and be like, huh, that's a big guitar. You would just think the person was smaller. I don't know what that logic is, but... Um, they're cool guitars. Daniel and I really like them. And, uh, one day we're going to make our Tenacious D cover band and, uh, we'll get into it. So, um, talking about pickups. So if you're talking about acoustic guitars versus electric guitars, electric guitars, you have 10,000 choices. Acoustic guitars, you have like seven choices. Um, there are so many, such fewer, um, there's such fewer choices for, for acoustic guitar pickups. The other thing with acoustic guitar pickups, um, on electric guitar pickups, very few people are, are worried about authentically replicating the sound of that guitar. They just want that guitar to sound cool, better, whatever it can be. Um, and people are much more willing. I hadn't even thought about this. But people are much more willing to change, pretty drastically change how that guitar sounds um, as an electric guitar with an acoustic guitar, most people want it to sound as accurate and good or to accentuate the, uh, the existing tone of their acoustic guitar. Um, so that's an interesting one. Um, acoustic guitar pickups are also, there's a pretty good range of prices. The cheap ones are terrible and I kind of refuse to even sell them like the sound hole pickups, like the woodies. They just don't sound good. Um, <clears throat> and they look goofy, but people don't want to spend $109 on a and k with an install fee. I get that. Um, and then buy a preamp. So, yeah, for electric guitars, it's more novel to change the pickups, and you can change the pickups a handful of times. On acoustics, you're kind of stuck, and there is... There is some residual value if you take out a set of Seymours or whatever out of a guitar, out of an electric guitar. There is basically no value in a used acoustic guitar pickup. That's a that's an interesting double standard on those. Um, I don't necessarily pay more for electric guitars that have nicer pickups in them. They don't add a whole lot of value. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Upgrading tuners. This is the one that started this whole idea. Um, I was thinking about this the other day. Think about this lunacy. Here is the, the crazy double standard. Electric guitar players. Their guitar does not stay in tune. And Les Paul. Like a Les Paul doesn't stay in tune. So what do they do? They're like, oh, it's those cheap Clusens. I have to change those to Grovers. And so they spend the $100 on Grovers, and they think that they did a thing that makes their guitar really a whole lot better. And they get these pickups, uh, or sorry, they get these tuners. They put them on their guitar. They drill new holes, yada, yada, yada. And their guitar, they're happy. Um, then... Acoustic guitar players have a guitar with Grovers already, and they say, I need to upgrade my tuners, I need to reduce mass, so I get rid of Grovers, and then they will spend so much more money on a set of tuners, for you'll, 220 250 up to $400 for Grover, or for the really nice Waverly tuners, <coughs> and then you have a set of Grovers that just sit in the bottom of your tool chest um, that you will keep around in case you ever sell that guitar and want to go back to the old tuners. Uh, so I think that this is some, you know, kind of some lunacy on, there's a double standard here. Um, the other thing is why does no one, has anyone ever put Waverly tuners on a Gibson Les Paul or a Gibson electric guitar or a three on a side? Or do you max out, like why don't you ever do open gear tuners um, on an electric guitar. I know some people are starting to do it. PRS offers some of them. Let's see. So Daniel says the first one is the the Clusons are great, and they work the same in my in my humble opinion, um, or honest opinion, humble opinion. Um, I think that's true. The, the whatever the Cluson reissues have gotten a whole lot better since Goto has started making them, uh, or uh, 
Clusan has just increased the quality of them pretty noticeably. Um, that's definitely one. And the Grovers are perfect. Uh, don't think the value merits the upgrade to Wave Release. But then, but when a guitar has them. Oh, but I like when a guitar has them. Yeah, I, I don't. It's interesting. Like the pendulum swings back and forth on whether Grovers are cool or not. Um, right now they're kind of swinging back to not, but I like Grovers. They're, I mean, it's interesting to me. <laughs> electric guitar players are silly. Um, like electric guitar players will will go on and on and on about how, um, you know, if you had enough mass, you could have sustained forever. I need to buy a Fender Fat Finger and clamp it on the headstock, or that's why I keep a capo on my guitar. It adds mass, and therefore it adds resonance, and it will add sustain. And then years later, like, no, those tuners are too heavy. They're killing all the resonance and all the effervescence of your guitar. That's why you need to strip down and get really light tuners. It's all just a funny kind of crazy. <laughs> goes back and forth every year uh yeah i don't like heavy tuners personally is what pine top says i get that uh, i think the pendulum just swings back and forth i think like what you like and uh have the courage to not just don't go on message boards that's an easy one you want a, a good guitar life don't yeah whatever i'm not saying you don't need information you don't need the onslaught of opinions i'm talking mostly about like reddit like the r the guitar subreddit and the luthier subreddit nonsense <laughs> um ryan says uh would you buy an acoustic guitar with a repaired head or a repaired side crack oh yes i've bought many 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 of them i wouldn't buy it for retail um or like even the used value it would definitely have to be you know 40 or 50 percent off um sometimes good um whoa Interesting. Original price is $3,300. Discounted price is $1,100. What's the guitar? What's the story here? Um, let's see. That's an interesting... That means... It either means that that's a really rough repair. Um, or maybe they got paid out some insurance money. Like if it's a retailer or a shop or a person. Who knows? Well, because there's two there's two factors there. If you're buying it from a person... Okay, when someone says what the new value of a guitar is when they're talking about selling it used, that is a red flag. That is someone that does not know how the world works. So if someone says, I paid $2,200 for this Yamaha Pacifica, whatever, this Yamaha Pacifica Pro, uh, therefore, I need to get $1,800. I say... That's not how this works. Let's look at what they are selling for used because there is a used market and that is what sets the value of this guitar. Um, and so you have to be able to show with actual transactions what things are actually going for. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a good, like if someone makes such a big deal about stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> Waverly's uh, enable fine tuning more easily. I think so too. And it's interesting I'm really curious now. I mean, I don't really, I don't have, I have a, I have a PRS custom 24 that has the SE tuners. And then I have, so I have a guild. I have a guild that already has open gear tuners. The S200 I played at the beginning of the show. Uh, but yeah. Let's see, Daniel says, I don't usually upgrade tuners unless there's a particular issue with one of them, and if it's a particular cheap, unbranded tuner. Yeah, I would say, if your guitar's not staying in tune, don't change the tuners. That's not your first thing. If your guitar's not staying in tune, look at the nut, look at the saddle, look at the intonation, look at the setup. Then, uh, change the tuners. <clears throat> unless you're, like, literally losing, like, losing tension or stuff. Or if you have a hump, or if there's some play in the tuners themselves. What would you say is the issue if you swap tuners, saddle, bridge pins, and the same string still slips? It's a good question. What are you doing wrong? <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, I would say if you swap the tuners, the saddle, the bridge pins, and the same string still slips, I would say it probably is showing how are you putting the string onto the guitar? Are you getting it seated properly all the way at the bridge? Probably. 
are you doing the luthiers not or not are you getting enough wraps i would say at that point if you change all those variables and still doing there's something about the installation of the string that would seem to be wrong behind that it could be but it is unlikely to be a manufacturer's defect <clears throat> so yeah i would yeah i would mo my my instinct everything inside my my gut here is saying that that would have to be something about how the string is being put onto the guitar. <coughs> what percentage off uh, off new are used guitar selling for? That's exactly what I'm saying. There is no real rule. Fifty to sixty percent gener fifty or sixty percent of their new value is generally what you can expect, uh, but that's not always the case. Um, you look at certain guitars. Only lose, you know, like Martin's, like Martin Standard Series, a D18, a D28, a $2,800 guitar will sell for $2,500 used. Like, they're not going to lose much, that much at all. Within 10 years, typically they're back to about retail on Martin's. But they are atypical. Gibson acoustic guitars hold their value incredibly well. But then there are others that are worth half. Um... Larave is a good example. I just bought a Larave yesterday that I'm just going to buy and sell real quick. And uh, yeah, so I would say you probably, it's kind of the wrong question to start with, in my opinion. Let's see. Uh, years ago, it was 70 to 80%. Is it less now? Yeah, it's, it's less now. Like, if you look at, um, so like, a Fender Player Strat sells for eight ninety nine right now. Um, use they're gonna sell for 500 550 so that's that's more i don't know the percent rasmus where you been man let's see okay <clears throat> ryan says the guitar is a taylor 314 oh, that wasn't okay so they're talking retail they're not talking like they're talking msrp not that guitar is not 3300 dollars um 314 reputable store maybe in canada i mean canada you guys get you have dollars that are worth less and guitars that are sold for much more. So I'm sorry. Um, but what is it? Okay. I don't think, I don't think a warranty, I don't care about warranties. They are not a motivating factor for me in my retail behavior. Kind of like Tavarish on, uh, on YouTube, like the car YouTuber. I am the warranty. <laughs> like, I don't care. I don't, uh, because when you do, even when you do have most warranty issues, brands are going to either say, too bad, so sad. It's, you know, not our, that is not a manufacturing defect. That's user wear, that's user abuse, whatever. Or they're going to say, well, you can do the Martin service, like Martin example, for example. You know, we, we can do a neck reset for you because you're the original owner, but it takes two years. So it's just, uh, yeah, that's where to me I'm like the warranty is not a motivating factor. Um, <clears throat> well, I guess you could have gotten, you could have lost track doing worse things. So that works out. Glad you're here. Uh, yeah, Guitar Hunter's all the warranty I need. Yeah, Alan had me buy a guitar, or he bought a guitar, sent it to me. I made sure it was good, and then we got it sent over. Uh, yeah, I think warranties, it's the, I mean, it's from Tommy Boy. It's like, you know, there's a warranty on the box, but it's just a war guaranteed piece of shit. So, yeah. So, okay. Upgrading tuners. Um, this is good. Pedals. Uh, a funny contradiction is that acoustic guitar brands are going to tell you that they make pedals specifically for acoustic guitars. Our reverb is high fidelity and beautiful and wonderful. Sure. Fine. Tell yourself that. I own an LR Bags reverb. It's great. Um, it sounds really beautiful. Um, but I also own a Hall of Fame Mini that's so cheap, and it can be any reverb I want, and it sounds just about as good. Um, I have less control, but it works out. Yeah. Uh, th for a long time, there weren't really pedals for acoustic guitars. And even now, it is funny when I think about, like, if I'm just playing out, would I ever want a chorus on my guitar? If I'm not playing with drums, if I'm not playing with bass, would I want, you know, chorus or flanger or phaser or any of any of those effects? And the answer is probably no. So, yeah. So pedals for acoustic versus electric. I would say pedals are pedals for the most part. And we're in such a golden era of pedals. So you can get such fun things. Uh, 
So. <lacht> Not surprised lawyers get more value out of warranties than non-lawyers. Yeah. Yeah, Daniel, that's funny. Because um, you've, you've mentioned that before, and you've gotten stuff in for me. I'm like, man, whatever. Um, but, yeah, any other thoughts on pedals? Okay, this is where my brain gets a little less scattered. Um Electric guitar requires drums. That's a weird kind of double standard. You can't just be like, hey, come see me Friday night. I'm doing an open mic. And you get there. I mean, it's going to be weird, right? There's this, like, cultural, social thing, um, which we saw that. We went to a pumpkin. No, we went, yeah, to, like, a harvest festival a couple years ago. And there was a guy there who was just playing. Just uh, He had, like, a drum set up or, like, a... Uh, it's like a drum sequencer pedal and a looper and backing tracks. And that dude was just full shredding. He had like a locking trim. It was something like, I think it was a John Petrucci. <coughs> uh, man. And uh, anyway, yeah, so this is, these are going to be less, less good. Here's, here's a weird double standard. Um, acoustic guitars have hard cases. And if you don't have a hard case, you're an amateur is the general like thought on this you can't put an you can't put an acoustic guitar into a gig bag and uh yeah it's an interesting weird double standard because you look at people that spend way more money on mono bags for electric guitars you're like what you spent four hundred dollars on a gig bag um but it's like cool and it shows that you're professional and yada 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 and you know that's like a lot of people playing in the big church gigs um, but yeah, this is an, in it's always an interesting one to me. Yeah. So yeah, for me, I, I hadn't thought too much about this until maybe a year ago, two years ago, I went to borrow a nice Huss and Dalton from my old guitar teacher, actually my old Huss and Dalton that he now owns. And, uh, he had it in a mono gig bag and I was like, you, you have this guitar. I ordered this guitar for so much money and you have it in a gig bag. And then by the end, I was like, this gig bag is better than any hard case I have ever owned. Had that huge squishy neck block. I mean, it's not, don't trust it on an airplane, but in almost all situations, it would work really, really, really well. So yeah, can't put an acoustic in a gig bag. Weird double standard. All right. I'm just going to blitz through these. We've only got a couple more minutes. Um, oh, this is interesting. So the spend, when you're thinking about guitars, um, and I kind of agree with this, like to get a real acoustic guitar is kind of $2,500. Like that's to get like a real, all solid, made in America, buy a reputable brand. I mean, on the low end, you might be around two grand. Uh, but two grand, twenty five hundred, up to three. That's just like that's just the cost of doing business, you know. But then you look at electric guitars. For me, I'm like, I can't justify an electric guitar over fourteen or fifteen hundred dollars. Now, I have guitar. I have one guitar that costs more than that, um, and it's my Rich Allen Vintage Guitars, my Blackguard. That one is like twenty five hundred bucks, <clears throat> but. For me, I'm like, I was looking at the at Hometown Music earlier today, and I was thinking, the Vintera No Caster is 1100 bucks. It is basically as good as a 52 Tele reissue, and you could swap every part on it and still be under $2,000 and have a screaming guitar. And so I think electric guitars, the value of them is so social. <clears throat> yeah for sure yeah i should say gibson yeah 2500 for a gibson electric um definitely and but they've they've really left they've left most like intermediate guitar players 
like very few people at this point are gonna i mean that's not true there's still plenty of people that are saving up and buying you know like a real les paul oh my goodness my phone has blown up <clears throat> i'm also talking like an idiot because i can hear myself getting hoarse by the end of this hour um, I agree. She's traveling for 5K with distressed finish and I'm flabbergasted. Ain't that the truth? Um, I mean, like, I get it. Uh, another rant is... Oh, I can turn these titles off. Uh, another rant is that Relic guitars have... We have lost touch with reality. Like, the hist like old guitars are grittier and all that stuff. Um, oh, man. My wife had such a good one. Let me see if I can th say this. Uh, okay. Hang on. What did she say? It was so good. Oh, one of the weird double standards that she has discovered, and I just have to say this one, I don't have a title for this one, but a double standard is this. You will find a vintage guitar, and it will look amazing, and you will spend way more money than you could get another modern guitar that looks similar for. And it will play much worse. That's the thing that my wife, who is not a guitar player, has seen happen in my life. She's seen it happen in other guitar playing friends. And so that's one of the weird double standards. Like, the more money you spend, the less you get sometimes. You'll get an old, you know, like, uh, it doesn't even have to be that old. But you get, like, an 80s Les Paul Custom, and it doesn't play that great. It's like, the frets are too flat. It's 15 pounds, and it hurts your back, hurts your neck. So, anyway, that's that's one of them that I think is so good. Uh, good grief. Juniors are now 1500 and specials are 1799 Barf. Those just, I'm not into those guitars. Um, I like, for me, I'm like, I'm into a 335. That's a $3,500 guitar. Um, I feel the same way. I want a 335, but somehow I feel like a $2,000 acoustic guitar seems more worth it to me. I think so too. Um, I can only afford my acoustic addiction. <clears throat> I'm telling you guys, if you do it right, they don't have to. Uh, they don't have to cost you. Uh, you can do a collection without really having to having to go into debt or borrow any money to do it. All right, Strat does not equal a Les Paul. This is I don't know. This is just I'm. We're getting into just like the tattered napkin at a bar in these in these thoughts. <clears throat> Here's what I'm gonna say. This isn't. This doesn't totally belong in this episode, but this will be where we land. Um, not all guitars are equivalent. Very few are actually comparable. There are some that are comparable. A J45 and a D18 are basically the same guitar. It's a Silverado and an F150. <coughs> Both American-made, full-size pickup trucks that do all kinds of stuff. Yada, yada, yada. Like, you kind of pick which one, you know, works best with you or yada, whatever. But there are other ones that are really, really different. Okay, continuing that analogy... Um, an F-250 would be a Gibson Les Paul. It is a heavy-duty, hard-to-build, expensive, professional thing. And on the other side would be like a Ford Maverick. You're like, that's an American Strat. You're like, it's cool, but it's a bolt-on, and it's just a painted body. It's one piece of wood that's cut on a CNC. It's kind of a plug-and-play pick guard. It's all top-mounted. It's just... A Les Paul is way harder to make than a Stratocaster. Most of us who are not that handy could, well, you could make a Telecaster. Like, you get a jigsaw, get a router, you could get there. You could get pretty close. Most people, um, with most of your fingers, by the end, you could have one of those guitars. Basically, no one could make their own Gibson Les Paul. Like, it is such a harder guitar to make with a set neck, the pocket, the tenon that goes into the body, the routed top, the relief, the control cut on the back. I mean, it is just... Sorry, this is a full rant here. Um, and uh, that's all I got. Yeah, I think that's where I'll end. Um, Hey, thank you, Howard. Yes, only 29 likes. That's perfect. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe. Um, who's selling a D40? Did I get a J... Hang on. Do I get a J45 standarded instead of keeping a vintage D40? Um, You're going to find they're pretty, pretty similar. 
the J45 will be a little more lively and a little a little louder. The D40 is going to be much more kind of subdued and thoughtful. But um, I don't know. I think D40s are cool. Um, guilds are a fun kind of un unsung hero, but very few people are really as into it. Um, so... Hey, -o, divided divided by Time Studios. Hey, glad you're here. Thanks for thanks for watching. Um, anything with a carved top is money and materials and labor. It's true. I mean, it's that's the most expensive part. Is anything that really involves like proper expertise. Um, so yeah, I just saw the uh, the triple O was in the thumbnail. Nice. Yes, uh, I love that guitar. It is so magically good, and. Uh, yeah, play it all the time. I just got a hi-fi. I'm going to put a hi-fi in it this week. Um, so, yeah. I prefer playing acoustic. I wish I could get an electric that felt like an acoustic, but could handle gain. Hey. Ooh. Yeah, you can do it. I think for most people... How much gain? Like a 335. It's pretty similar. But a 335 with low wine pickups... I just had a 335 recently that was so absolutely stunningly good. Um, I couldn't keep it because it was worth too much money. That's what happens to me every time. One day, money will be a not, not be an object. <laughs> and I'll get to just keep the guitars that I like. Um, saw a guitar online. Uh, saw online. Saw an online friend build an arch top from rock maple. Carving an equity into me. <clears throat> Dude, seriously. <coughs> But, Shepard, you got three grand. What acoustic, what pickup, what amp, or PA? Oh, this is a great question. Hmm. Okay. Yesterday I found what I think is the most guitar I've gotten for the lowest amount of money in a long time. Um, I bought a 2009 Larave L9 with a cedar top and maple back and sides it is magical it sounds so good plays great looks beautiful i got that guitar for eleven hundred dollars i would put a 109 dollar k and k pure mini in it and then i would get a bose no i would get the yamaha stage pass um because it's better controls and better layouts the yamaha stage pass is basically similar to the bose s1 or one of those kind of fishman style so it's the tower speaker and then the subwoofer in the bottom. Those are fifteen hundred bucks, thirteen fifty when they're on sale. So what's that? Thirteen fifty plus eleven hundred plus a hundred, and I've got some money left over, and I would just get a bunch of strings after that. I would get a pedal tuner. That's the other thing. Uh, yeah, pedal tuner. I could do. I, I could do all of it. I could do a pedal tuner and a stage. Uh, maybe I'd have to do the session. Uh, smaller di or a pair of di something like that that's awesome <laughs> all right that's a good place to end leave us with that thank you buddy um there you go that's fun all right well um the rad t-shirts are back they are officially on the way and so these are going to be the super fun kind of summertime the what if guitar hunter existed in the 1980s is the logo i would have used so those are going to pop up here in the next little bit they've been for sale we i went to order them a few months ago and there wasn't enough interest at that point so we're trying again don't make don't waste my money <laughs> uh, buy some of those shirts uh a sad memory is that Guitar Hunter Coffee is officially gone. Uh, it really slowed down people buying it, and then the roaster said that it just wasn't time for us to do do that. David, I, I'm selling this one, so you don't have to be that jealous because you can own it uh, here in a little bit. It will be for more money than, yeah. Um, so let's see, Yamaha FG5, excellent choice. That's an expensive guitar, like 1650 uh, bags anthem 329 bucks so you're at two grand there uh, and then a bag session uh, 100 and 200 bucks and a Bose S1 Pro yeah that's right yeah 600 bucks or so uh, for the S1 so man that's a great hey you know generous um, yeah I mean if, if you're really interested Andy Andy's in 
Santa Barbara. Hey, buddy. Um, yeah. So uh, if if you do want it, it should be done um, getting spruced up and sorted uh, from my tech uh, here soon. So anyway, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching the video. I'm Jeremy. This is Guitar Hunter. And you and I, all of us, we have a job to do. It is our job to fill the world with music and friendship. I'm thankful for every one of you. Thanks for watching these videos. Uh, like, subscribe, support the channel, become a patron, do the things. And uh, thanks for hanging out. It's always fun. And uh, I'll see you all later.